Hey guys, and welcome to Go Build a TV. Um, today we've got kind of a fun, chill episode. This one's going to be mostly related to gears. So we're going to talk a lot about um, spur gears, bevel gears, miter gears, and all of that fun stuff, and especially how those things relate to Go Build a parts. We've got a really fun giveaway for you today. Um, we've got one of these fancy new Go Build a TV hats. We only made 12 of these, and we're only going to give away a few, so. This or next show might be your last chance to get it. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to talk about gears and all of the stuff they provide. They're a really, really important part of the GoBuilder ecosystem, um, especially when you are creating a ratio that's not available in a 5202 gear motor, or if you're trying to change the exact location of your um, power provided. A lot of times, um, especially outside of FTC, gears are used in a reduction and pretty much only a reduction. Um, overdriving a system after a gearbox, for example, is kind of a taboo a lot of the time. And I know people who work here at GoBuilda who weren't familiar with FTC, when they first saw FTC teams overdriving stuff, they were like, what the heck is going on? I, this is appalling. <laughs> um, so that is really interesting. Most of the time, um, you're encouraged to run a faster motor and then gear it down afterward. Um, that's kind of the general consensus of um, what you should be doing within, from an efficiency standpoint. Um, you should be choosing a faster ratio motor and then slowing it down if possible. Um, that should give you a better overall results and um, kind of give you a nicer, um, better performing availability. This is a great example of some gears um, that you use, one of them being much larger than the other two. Um, and it's really fun to play with, of course, but it's a good example of a reduction. Um, here I've got a 36 tooth gear. Here I've got a 24 tooth gear. So those work really well in the build -a system because these are a Mod.8 gear and that number of teeth adds up to 60 total. So um, when you add that 36 to that 24, you get 60 gears, and that's the number of teeth, excuse me, not 60 gears, 60 teeth. That's the total number of teeth you would need between two gears on GoBuilda to mesh on a 24 mil or one hole spacing. Um, if you're going to, looking to go bigger, um, you would go to a 48 hole spacing where you're looking at 120 teeth, and if you were looking for a three hole spacing, you'd of course add um, two more teeth to that. So with that in mind, a lot of the gear tooth options available on GoBuilda are um, chosen to create very real and reasonable ratios for channel. So um, for example, a great example is two 60 tooth gears. They make a one to one ratio on a 48 mil spacing. Um, another great example is a 30 tooth pinion and a 90 tooth spur gear. Um, those will make a 3 to 1 ratio. And most for, um, say, an 8 millimeter Rex, we have everywhere down from 3 to 1 to 5 to 1 on 48 mil spacing. And we have 1 to 1, um, 1 and a half to 1, and 2 to 1 as pinion gears on a 24 mil spacing. Pinion gears versus, I call them spur gears, I don't think that's technically the correct term there, um, is an interesting distinction. Um, within a set of gears, the pinion gear is, ooh, we have our second camera, awesome. Um, the pinion gear is the smaller gear of the two. This is a little confusing because there's three, but if we ignore this big aluminum spur, and we just talk about these two pinion gears, in this case, this smaller 24 tooth gear is the pinion. Um, that means if you were to drive this gear, you would get fewer rotations of this larger gear than you would be putting into it, and that's a gear reduction. Um, if you were to drive this 36 tooth gear and you're driving this 24 tooth gear, you are getting an overdrive effect, some people call it an abduction, um, and that's normally expressed by saying, um, let's see here, the, you generally um, talk about in terms of gear ratios, you would say like 20 to 1, that's a great example. That would mean 20 rotations of your output shaft are equal to one rotation of your input shaft. Um, that can also work if you just say the tooth count of the gear. Um, those ratios are just fractions. 
So you could say five to one if you wanted to express um, that, or you could say 20 to 100. Um, or in this case, it'd be 100 to 20 if you wanted to talk about the reduction. If you're talking about overdriving a gear set, you would say the, say five, instead of saying five to one, you'd say one to five. So one to five would mean one rotation of your input shaft and five rotations of your output shaft for that overdrive effect. And that's where you're having a motor spin an end shaft much faster, or even just a little faster than your input. This can also be um, used in a lot of different applications. If you're trying to get more resolution out of an encoder, um, you can use a gear reduction there. If you're trying to get more torque, you can use a gear reduction there. Or if you're trying to get more speed, you can use an overdrive setup there. Um, these are used a lot of times in car differentials and in car gearboxes where you want to change the amount or change the free speed of your vehicle, essentially. Let's see. Oh, I've not caught up on the chat in a minute. Um, Definitely make sure if you guys are in the chat, um, if you're in Twitch chat, we've not got this working yet, but if you're in Twitch, if we're, we don't have it, you're working in YouTube chat, excuse me. If you're in Twitch chat, um, you can type gears into the chat and you should be entered to win our giveaway. Our giveaway is going to be two um, steel pinion gears and one of these cool Go Build a TV hats. Um, and when we're near the end of the stream, we will roll for that giveaway and figure out who wins. We probably will choose two winners today. Uh, Algebra Gamer 20 says, at GoBuilda, can I work at GoBuilda? Um, right now, we don't have any internships or job um, availabilities of open right now, um, but over the summer, we're most likely going to have interns again. So keep an eye out on like our social media page and at GoBuilda.com um, for info at that. If you're past college age um, or not in college and you're interested in working here, um, shoot us an email. Shoot, shoot it to tech at gobuilder.com or marketing at gobuilder.com and we'll make sure it gets to the right people here um, for, to get you a chance at an interview or something like that. All right, back to gears. Um, so gears are used all over the place, um, especially when you're building FTC robots and stuff like that. And there can be kind of a stigma against them. Um, I know when I was in FTC, people tended to want to use chain or belts for a couple of reasons. Um, the first being belt and chain are, can be lighter if you're stretching a longer distance. Gears are really great up close, but if you're trying to go 17 inches away, a belt or a chain is likely going to be a better option. Um, the other thing is if your um, structure is not braced properly, if you have some play, in your shaft or if the structure holding your two points of support on that shaft is not very rigid that can bend away um, and if you put a lot of torque on a gear system like this you can cause that gear to skip so it's really important when you're building a gear system like this that you're putting a lot of torque through that you make sure it's really strong and you might want to look at putting a bearing on either side of the gear compared to cantilevering it like we have here where both points of support are on one side of the gear this is an example of um, using multiple gears in one system, which is not very common in FTC. Um, you want to keep in mind when you're using multiple gears that your direction changes. So your first gear, say you're spinning clockwise, your second gear will spin counterclockwise, and your third gear will spin clockwise again, and it'll just continue going. Um, the other thing is when you're using a multiple gear gear train like this, if you're trying to get a really massive... Um, as long as all of the gears are in contact with each other, the only gears that matter for your ratio are the first and last gear. You could have 100 gears in between those two, but and it doesn't matter what size they are. As long as your first, your first gear and your last gear are the only ones that determine your actual ratio. So in this case, we have a 36 to a 96, I believe, which is going to be something funky um, because Neither of these, these gears are really aren't designed to work together in GoBuilda. The spacing doesn't work out on 24 mil pitch. Um, is the keyword for giveaway gears with a capital G or a lowercase g? Um, I think they both will work, but I'm pretty sure it is a lowercase g in my setup here. Um, doesn't look like it's going to let me check because I've already started the giveaway, but I would just try both if it was me. <laughs> um, let's see here. What's the spacing between each hole in the structure? I wonder if I can use gears with Tetrix structure parts. So um, our gears are a mod 0.8 gear. Um, and you'll hear probably mod 0.8 and 
or, or a you'll hear mod and DP used a lot when referring to gears, especially probably sport gears. Um, mod 0.8 is the gear or is the mod size we use, and that mod is the ratio between the number of teeth on a gear and the diameter of that gear. Um, the larger the mod number, the larger each individual tooth. Mod is pretty easy. Um, it is just number of teeth per millimeters. So 0 0.8 um, would mean if you divided your diameter or multiplied your diameter by the mod, you would get the total number of teeth in that system. So if we take 24 and multiply it by 0.8, um, we get that number of years, um, 60, I suppose. And then in that use case, because you've got your 60, um, whew, I confused myself there for sure. Anyway, um, DP and mod are both different ways of measuring the size t of each tooth on a gear and measuring the overall diameter of that gear. With our mod 0.8, which is very, very close to 32 DP, depending on who you ask, um, you may be able to use those interchangeably. They're very, very, very close. Um, and chances are you can mesh them together with no issues. With our Mod.8 gears, um, they're set up for a 24 millimeter spacing with 60 teeth total, um, or 48 millimeter spacing with, um, say, 120 teeth total. That's why you'll see most commonly two 30 tooth gears um, as a one to one ratio. On Tetrix, the standard holes are going to be 16 millimeters apart. Um, so instead of that 60 teeth total, you need to figure out the amount you need for 16. Um, a one-to-one -one ratio, of course, there would just need two gears with a pitch diameter of 16. So um, we know we can find that. Let's see here. Let's see here. Your best option, uh, if you want the for sure best answer, would be to shoot us an email to tech at gobilda.com. Um, I'm sure I'll be able to help you out there. Let's see, 16 divided by 0 0.8. Um, looks like you would need two 20 tooth gears to create a one-to-one -one ratio on Tetrix channel with your 16 millimeter spacing. Um, and you would just need 40 tooth overall. So you could say take a 15 tooth and a 25 tooth mesh those together and get a ratio there. Um, you can also say make use multiple holes instead of going directly from one to the next. You could skip over a hole, um, use a 30, two 30 tooth gears, excuse me, two 40 tooth gears and that'll get you the correct ratio. Um, Ethan phone leak, I suppose that's right. I'll put that back in my pocket. Um, in GoBuilda, we like to make this easy for you. Um, most all the gears in GoBuilda are chosen for a very specific ratio. Um, we have a 96 tooth gear, and that's really only for use when with a 24 tooth pinion gear. Um, and there really aren't a lot of places you'll use that 96 tooth gear except there. Um, but a lot of teams do create their own custom ratios and their own custom plates where they can control that center distance spacing and um, in that case you can use whatever two gears you want as long as you create their center distance to match those two gears. We've talked a lot about spur gears and spur gears are the most common type of right angle gear um, or gear where the tooth are perpendicular to the plane of the gear. Um, there are also different kinds of gears with that overall shape. Um, you can have what are called helical gears, where you take a gear and you rotate the tooth. It's a lot more complicated than that, but essentially you're putting the tooth at an angle and creating those gears to run together. Um, there are also double helical or um, herringbone gears. Those are also very, a lot more complex, but they have advantages if you're willing to um, go a little over the normal spur gear budget and, and or you're hoping to 3D print or via another method manufacture gears yourself. Within GoBuilda, we have a couple of primary ways to do right angle gear, um, gear setups. The older style and the one that's probably more commonly used is the two to one bevel gear setup. This will give you a two to one ratio between your um, 14 and your 28 tooth gears. And bevel gears are really, really common across FTC and across all of the industries. Um, they are used a lot when you need to create this right angle. 
Being a bevel here doesn't mean you can't have uh, different kinds of tooth prof profiles. This is still a kind of um, straight cut gear. You can also have helical bevels and herringbone bevels and all that stuff. Um, but we here at GoBuilda use straight cut gears because they are a lot more affordable. And most of the time the extra efficiency and holding power isn't really needed um, for small scale robotics applications like this. So bevel gears, um, in GoBuilda are really nice. They give you a lot of ability to vary the ratio um, and slow it down a little more before it hits your final output shaft. This is really nice if you're doing, if you need say a 20 to one ratio, uh, or if you say need a 40 to one ratio, you can have a 20 to one gear motor and a two to one bevel gear set. The other way people do it most of the time is using miter gears. So the biggest question we got when we first released these gears are, uh, was what are miter gears? Um, why did you call them that? What does that actually mean? So miter gear is a term for a one to one bevel gear that's also at a 90 degree. So it's just a little bit more of a, a quick compact way to say one to one bevel gear. This is really nice if you have a gear ratio that you really like coming right out of the gearbox and you just want to get that at a right angle. We use the setup in the strafer chassis and all over the place. Um, it is really pretty effective. Um, let's see, looks like Kevin sent a link to our, our word and gears. That is also a kind of gear. I totally forgot about those when I was setting up for this video, so I don't have any, but worm gears are another way to make a 90 degree um, gear ratio. They're really good for two main reasons. Um, the first one being they are not back drivable. So um, a worm gear, because of the tooth profile makes it very, very, very difficult to back drive that setup. They're also really good at being a pretty compact way to get a nice aggressive gear ratio. I believe ours are 28 to one or 24 to one. Um, but back on miters, within the miter and bevel gear setup, you are adding another kind of force in the mix. Um, and that is axial force. So you're pushing back against your motor and against that shaft. And this can hurt efficiency some in some situations and sometimes it can cause those gears to be a little more likely to skip. That is why um, say in the strafer assembly and in some assemblies we show in product insights, um, you'll see thrust bearings behind those miter gears. Thrust bearings are a kind of bearing that is designed specifically to take um, thrust loads against something. So you can sandwich it between a part and a plate and get a really nice, um, very smooth action despite having a really lot of load against that bearing. Um, something that a standard radial bearing like you see all over within GoBuilda um, wouldn't be able to take. You'll see these if you take a look at our dual pattern pillow blocks. Um, they, you take advantage of thrust bearings really, really well. I'm actually going to take apart this miter gear setup so we can take a look at it a little in a little more detail. Ah, oh, that's how I got that together. I was like, wait, I assembled this, but now I can't get it apart. Um, the strafer is... Can't, it is not really that bad to put together as long as you do it in the right order, but if you have it in the wrong order, it will not go very well for you. So um, this is a single eight millimeter Rex miter gear. It is a 30 tooth, a mod 0 0.25. Yep. And so it's going to be a little bigger and a little more aggressive than our standard straight cut spur gears. And that's because you do have that additional vector the additional force um, applied to these gears that makes them just a little bit more likely to skip. You can see this is two thirds of a thrust bearing. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but this makes it run just a little smoother. And you can see the matching gear set on the motor side. I'm hoping you guys will be able to hear, but the next thing I'm going to do is actually assemble the, this setup incorrectly, um, where you will most likely be able to hear, let's see here, it's this way. Um, here these gears get a lot noisier and I'll do that on purpose so you guys can figure out how to fix that. Um, oftentimes noisy bevel gears or noisy miter gears are caused by simply having them too tight. Um, and having those gears most of the time um, 
if your gears are noisy, it means they're probably also not being very efficient. So you'll want to make sure that your gears in pretty much whatever application are running nice and quiet, unless they are really huge gears and they're moving pretty slow. And in that case, efficiency may, be not, be, may not be your biggest worry. We'll actually get this back together, as long as I can line up the hexes again. Hmm. There we go. All right, so we got that set up all back together. And instead of um, tightening the set screw where it naturally should be, I'm going to actually go through and modify this to make it a little too tight and you guys should be able to hear that system going um, a little, getting more inefficient. You can, you'll be able to feel it getting a little harder to turn. In that case, I generally recommend backing the gear on the motor back just a hair, and even just like a quarter of a millimeter sometimes can be able to um, really put a lot of extra unneeded stress on that system. So I didn't get it quite tight enough I suppose. Oftentimes there's a spot where miters and bevels both kind of just feel nice. Yeah. This kind of gets not very nice because that pinion is meshed a little too tight. So the next thing I'll do is loosen that set screw back up, move that gear back just a little bit and tighten it back in place. Um, Candyman fi underscore 500 say Said, asks why some gears are steel, some gears are brass, and some are aluminum. He also wants to know why the steel gears are black. So um, the easiest one to answer is going to be the aluminum gears. These are aluminum because it makes the most sense for their application. They're big gears. Um, you want them to be fairly lightweight. And aluminum is that nice balance between weight and robustness. Um, so that's why our big spur gears are aluminum, and they really always have been. The ones that have changed are going to be our pinion gears. So these used to be brass, and I believe one or two of them still might be brass. Um, but we moved to steel after we had some teams, especially on big arm applications, they stripped out the brass gears. Um, so we went to steel, that, and we made them black, so they're very easily distinguishable and because we thought they looked pretty cool. Um, in some applications, especially in industry, Brass gears running on aluminum gears or brass gears running on steel gears are used as what's called a sacrificial gear, where you know one of those gears in that system is going to wear out first. And you do that on purpose because it's a lot easier to replace than the other one. If you had a huge steel gear um, and a really small pinion, you might want to make that pinion out of an, a material that's going to wear before the steel so that you don't wear out the steel gear and ever have to replace it. With an FTC, that's a, it, that doesn't ever make sense. But um, outside in the industry, that's used sometimes um, in some applications. Um, let's see here. We'll take a look at this question. Um, 101 Bob says, would using miter gears to spin a flywheel be a bad idea? Um, it likely would be loud, just like Andrew pointed out. Um, we have seen some teams do it and it works all right, but I would recommend looking at spur gears generally because their um, center distance is a little more forgiving and they're gonna be a little easier to make run very smoothly. Um, I would also take a look at belt and stuff like that over miter gears, um, just because miter gears can be a little tricky and when you're talking about a system with really low torque, um, the additive inefficiency can hurt that a lot more than something like a drivetrain that has plenty of torque um, and a little inefficiency is not really a big deal. Um, generally, and it's a big generalization to compare efficiencies of any system, like saying chain is less efficient than gears, really doesn't work because you have on only established the huge general spectrum that each thing falls into. Um, some gears might be more efficient than some chain, and some chain will be more efficient than some gears. So it's 
really tough to nail down what actually is more efficient than another thing. But um, in this case, because there are two variables that I'm really familiar with, I would say your spur gear is probably going to be more efficient than your miter gear, um, depending all of, on the situation. So now we've talked about spacing miter gears and um, all of that stuff. I do really like having spacers or some kind of thrust bearing, something to control exactly where miters or bevels are on the shaft because I think it makes that system overall a lot better and a lot more reliable, um, which is a really important thing. I actually have some worm gears here now, so we'll circle back over to those. Worm gears aren't used as commonly in FTC, um, but they are a really, really cool gear option. This is your pinion side. It looks a lot like a screw, um, kind of like a lead screw. The geometry, of course, is going to be a lot different, but that is what it looks similar to. And there is a brass spur larger gear in this system. This is going to be your output, while, whereas your screw worm is going to be your input. That these gears, because of the way they are cut, um, mean if you try to turn that brass gear, it will pro really push a lot of force linearly on that screw um, or on that worm. And that makes it so that it's really, really hard to back drive because most of your energy is going into attempting to, to slide that worm linearly instead of trying to actually make it rotate. On the flip side, your screw has a lot of mechanical advantage and has a really, really easy time turning its rotational motion into rotational motion on the um, output side. So um, that, of course, means that you have a system that's really nice for arms and other similar setups. Um, I personally worked at a greenhouse, and we used them to hold up. Um, we used uh, some old worm gears and on the mechanism that tilted up the skylights so that you could open the roof up and the roof would stay there um, without having to go through that setup like that. So it's really nice for applications where you want to be able to turn off a motor or leave a hand crank there and have something stay there because you're driving the only side that can really rotate. They also, of course, like I mentioned earlier, are great at really compact reductions. You can get a 24 or a 28 to one um, in the same space as you could only maybe fit a three to one in a spur gear. Um, just because you can get a um, worm that has a much smaller effective diameter um, than your worm side. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I tried my idea. It was quite loud. I would, that's what I have seen from other miter gear based shooters in the past. Um, one thing you might want to try if you do end up going with a miter gear shooter is to create an enclosure around that gear setup and um, likely add some lubricant, some like gear oil or some um, white lithium grease would be a really good option there. Um, that would likely get that system a little smoother. And as long as it's in kind of an enclosure, it keeps dust and dirt out of that setup. Um, one thing you want to avoid is sawdust and metal flakes from getting in those gears and sticking because of your grease. That can mess things up a lot for sure. Um, I think we're kind of rolling toward and being ready to run uh, roll for our giveaway. It is for the Gobilda TV hats and two pinion gears. If you do win, um, shoot us an email over to marketing at gobilda.com. Um, let them know what tooth count and what bore you want for that gear. And um, let them know your hat size. We have medium and large for hat size. Um, it's technically small, medium, uh, medium, large, or like large XL or something like that. Uh, we also have measurements on the website for uh, our other hats. So we'll go ahead and close our entries and pick our first winner. It uh, looks like Dev Boy um, is the first winner for that hat combo. Um, congratulations there. Shoot us an email for sure. And we'll pick one more winner today. Um, looks like my name is unavailable, which I think I've commented on in the past. It is a funny name. Um, so congratulations to both you guys. Definitely shoot us an email, get your fun merch and your new gears. Hopefully use them on your robot. And if you do, shoot us an email. Um, we love to see pictures of robots and pictures of parts used in different and unique ways. Um, you'll often see on our website product insights for exactly how that part was designed to be used. Or sometimes one of you guys will think up a cool, fun, new way to use parts that we didn't think of. 
Um, somebody proposed a, a let's see, uh, gusset or kind of um, rubber insert based intake wheel that used some pretty clever building techniques in GoBuilda, and we really liked seeing stuff like that. I love passing around in group chats and ha hearing people's opinions on them. With that, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back next Friday um, with another great show for you guys. I think this next show is going to be really, really special. So I really hope you come back for it. Make sure to follow us at GoBuilda on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. And we'll see you around next time.